Hi, welcome to Software Supply Chain Aspects in Infrastructure as Code. My name is Leor Kaplan and I'm the Open Source Officer for Checkmarks. I'll start with a short background about myself. I started as a Linux sysadmin before there was cloud or the title was referred to DevOps. I'm a Debian GNU Linux developer and I work with the PHP security team as part of working both for Zen, the PHP company, and part of my work in Debian. Today, I'm managing the open source program office at Checkmarks and I'm leading the Kix open source project, which stands for Keep Infrastructure as Code Secure. Today, we'll talk about infrastructure as codes and its relation with software supply chain and how can we learn from software supply chain regarding infrastructure as code. Let's do a short review about software supply chain. Uh, in the slides uh, before you, uh, which uh, I took courtesy of Justin Murphy from DHS, you'll see logos of major incidents regarding software security related to open source, excluding uh, Shellshock, Heartbleed, Meltdown, and a lot of others. But what's common to all of them, they were completely um, not intentional. They weren't malicious. Uh, the developers of these uh, open source project had a regular mistake uh, while developing what we call, we know it as a bug. Um, when the, the bug was reported, they did their best to fix it uh, and share it with the community in a responsible way. Uh, the developers didn't try to uh, use the, the problem in their advantage. They just tried to fix the, the mistake they've done accidentally. When we talk about software security, um, we talk about uh, the famous quote, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And as we see with current uh, cases of software security and CVEs being reported, we see there's uh, an increase in effect uh, in the numbers of problems we see and the increased use of our dependency on su such software. The graph that you see does see the, the trend. Uh, I think they, they didn't create the graph for uh, 2022 recently uh, or in the last few months. As you can see from the table below, uh, we still have December uh, for this year and we're really surpassed what we re have been reported for last year. Uh, the breakdown might change, but the idea is that we, we get more and more software and of course, more and more uh, security related uh, reports regarding that. But when we talk about uh, something as code, we might ask ourselves what happens for those who don't learn from the present, not only from the past, but from things we see at the moment. And I'm talking about anything as code right now because there's a lot to learn from software. And of course, software is code. Uh, let's review uh, quite quickly some of the major incidents we had in the last few months. I'll talk mostly about August, but I'll also reference uh, November, uh, which had a few incidents by itself. Uh, the research I'm going to show you was done by the Checkmark Software Supply Chain uh, Research Team and they share their uh, results on Medium. You can follow up on that as well quite easily. Uh, in August, we started to see large scale campaigns created to fake GitHub project uh, clones with fake commit added uh, a, a malware to them. Um, we saw a lot of attackers try to uh, mimic whatever there's on open source, adding a malicious bit to it. Uh, using, of course, misleading names and so on, just trying to get people to use these projects. Uh, we saw a typo squatting campaign targeting Python's top packages, um, creating uh, automatic code and injecting malware. And we started to see this as uh, widespread campaigns, uh, which led to a threat actor publishing more than a thousand malicious PyPy and NPM packages trying to uh, persuade people to use these packages. And of course, at some point we started to see uh, malicious users trying to strike again with another set of tools uh, from the supply chain world 
and ways to uh, to mislead people. And uh, at the end of the of August, we start the first known phishing attack against PyPy users, meaning attackers targeted the maintainers of packages trying to steal their credentials uh, in order to be able to release in their names. Uh, in November, we started to see new ways of uh, attackers trying to get these malicious packages uh, take action. And we started to actually see uh, use of TikTok challenges uh, or popular videos in TikTok uh, being the base of uh, encouraging people to install malicious packages. In that case, uh, um, a package that might help reverse the, the effect of uh, uh, invisible uh, uh, narrators uh, in TikTok movies. And again, we see uh, attacks on more sophisticated attacks, uh, trying to steal credentials, in this case, Discord, trying to steal uh, cryptocurrency wallets, and a lot of uh, problems uh, based on these kind of malicious packages. Going back to anything as code, uh, we might have more than just uh, regular software that we, we use to. Uh, it might be infrastructure, it might be policy, it might be configuration. And there's also a trend that calls everything as code in which uh, anything we can create uh, a menu from, uh, sorry, uh, files from, we can save them, uh, might be treated as code if we can formalize their structure and so on. When we talk about everything as code, uh, it brings uh, a lot of the good things we see in software and its code, efficiency, re repeatability, reuse, uh, the ability to scale, and of course, code management through Git and the software uh, development lifecycle uh, uh, and GitOps. There's a lot of benefit on those, but we also inherit the problems. Uh, for example, dependencies, and in some cases, we know it's dependency hell, uh, and of course, with dependencies, we also get the software supply chain or the effect of supply chain because we're not only talking about software anymore. If we talk about infrastructure as code, let's talk about some of the efficiency uh, it brings us. For example, we have uh, the from uh, clause in Docker files. By the way, include wasn't accepted. Uh, I check their uh, GitHub repository and their history. Uh, so we can reuse base images. Uh, with Terraform, we have templates. Uh, with Kubernetes, we have uh, Helm charts. With CloudFormation, we have the AWS include phase. Sorry, phrase. Uh, so in all of these cases, we can reuse the resource written uh, um, by us uh, previously. Uh, and in a lot of cases, we also can reuse resource written by others, uh, not necessarily from our own organization. In this case, it raises the question of trust. When we use some code uh, from someone else, how do we make sure it's secure, it's safe, and so on? And before we jump into that, um, we might find a... a the need to find the right containers um, in case we want to, to find something to use um, for our own uh, um, uh, tool chain or, uh, or project. Let's say we want to find the right container uh, um, for our job, and that would be quite similar to finding the right NPM package or PyPy package and others, whatever repository you work for you work with. Uh, we might be able to, to check, to find something relevant by the number of downloads, by the last updated date, uh, by the number of stars in popularity, of course, by indication, it's a verified publisher. And uh, in a lot of cases, we uh, want to check something. We'll go to the GitHub repository. We look at the number of stars. In this case, I use uh, Minayo as a reference. Uh, it's a quite popular project uh, to create a S3 interface. Uh, as you can see, it has uh, more than 30,000 uh, 30, uh, stars on GitHub, uh, and it's very successful. 
let's say we want to find the Helm chart uh, for that project. I went into uh, a Helm chart uh, search uh, called the Artifact Hub. It's a, a CNCF project being incubated. And I looked for Minayo and I'll show you the, the result. Uh, in this case, we see we have uh, a few more, a few results, uh, and I mark some of them uh, so we could discuss it quite easily. We see there's something which is uh, uh, called Minayo. The repository is referenced as Minayo official. It it only has two stars, uh, and it was last uh, updated ten days ago. Next we, next to it, we see there's uh, another project. Uh, sorry, uh, another results called Minayo as well. Um, it's, it has fix, uh, 65 stars um, and it was updated uh, a day ago. Quite interesting. Uh, I wonder which option would you choose? We see there's uh, another option which is called Minayo. The repository itself also called Minayo, same as uh, on GitHub. And it only has one star, but it was updated, updated two years ago, which uh, in a lot of cases, uh, looks quite weird. We see that in some cases we have the, the the logo with the name. In some cases, we also have the icon, uh, like in the top uh, bottom right. And in this case, it makes uh, it's quite confusing to choose the right option because all of them have the same name. We need to distinguish between the different characteristics on our own and we don't have an indication which one is the official one. And talking about uh, the levels of typo squatting, typo squatting is when you try to mislead someone by choosing a, a similar name. In this case, we have the exact same name, uh, but different levels, sorry, different details. And there's, when talking about infrastructure as code, there's different levels of typo squatting. There's, there might be typo squatting in the Helm chart on other or other infrastructures code files. There might be typo squatting on the container name. And of course, uh, regular typo squatting in uh, software uh, where the name of the packages might be misleading. Um, in case we want to, to find the uh, right container and not uh, the Helm charts as we did previously, Again, we need to go to a search engine and search for uh, Minayo. And in the same case, how would we rate it? Downloads, last update date, uh, stars, verify publishers, and so on. In this case, we you can see we have quite a lot of results. Uh, there's 2,300 results and a little bit more. Um, the first result would be uh, Bitnami Minayo. There's an indication it's a verified publishers. It has uh, an increasing, sorry, a, a high number of uh, downloads, uh, more than 10 millions and about 50 stars. We see there is another uh, uh, verified publisher with 1 million downloads, but that was updated uh, two years ago. And another one by IBM, which was updated three years ago, and it has a verified publisher. All of these looks very um we might be able to trust all of them, uh, both the verified publisher, both the number of downloads. Uh, the updated date might be a little bit suspicious for the last two, uh, but it might be confusing for people. Um, also notice the name that the rancher one is Minayo dash Minayo, uh, but the Bitnami one is Minayo and IBM also is called Minayo. But the actual official result is on the next pages. And as you can see, uh, it has 500 million downloads and 600 stars, but that's not the top result, which means that the when we search anything on the repository uh, or the registry to be exact, uh, the first results might be misleading here as well. And in this case, we might trust uh, the, the container we get from Bitnami, but it's not the official one. The official one comes from the open source project. And in this case, you also see that it doesn't have any logo. Um, it says it's by Minayo, but we have no idea to ver verify that. And that's another big problem. Um, another thing is that from the same author, we have a different library. And in this case, 
you can see that the client, uh, MC is uh, Minayo client, uh, was updated 15 days ago, while this image was updated uh, 15 hours ago, which is also something which might mislead a lot of people. Uh, besides selecting the right uh, helm charts and uh, um, container, there's a question, how much do you invest time in actually reading those or checking that whatever you, you, you decided to use is either from uh, a trusted source or did you check the, the commands or whatever the, the ingredients being used to create those? Uh, in a lot of cases, people go to the documentation, copy paste commands, copy paste instruction, just install it. And any uh, mistake in, in these uh, um, instructions or references uh, to files might, be, uh, might have a catastrophic effect, whether it be uh, an unintentional mistake or something which is malicious. For example, uh, we'll talk about uh, the WordPress um, uh, container and we'll demonstrate it with it, the container supply chain. Whenever you uh, install, uh, uh, sorry, whenever you use the WordPress uh, container, official container, by the way, you actually have a from clause that says, I want to use uh, PHP. Uh, uh, versions, some version and uh, some variant of distribution. In this case, PHP uh, version uh, uh, 7.4 uh, based on uh, Apache uh, web server. If you go to that container as well, you'll see which that is, it is based on uh, a container from Debian. Uh, in this case, Buster Slim. Uh, Buster is one of the uh, named of uh, a release by Debian. And Slim means it's probably a, a Slim install or probably smaller one to, to lower the footprint. And in this case, um, we'll indicate that uh, WordPress uses a PHP a container built from source. And that's in, in case use Debian uh, already available uh, images and actually reuses them. If we go to look at uh, uh, the Debian container, we'll, sorry, the Debian Docker file, uh, we'll actually see that it's been used from scratch. Uh, we just add a root file system and call the command line. And in this case, there's a problem because you don't, you don't know anything about these files, you just know it's a tarball being extracted and that's our container. And if you look at the URL below, uh, you'll see that it's it's not coming from the official GitHub uh, organization for Debian. It's come from something else. Although it says Docker Debian artifacts, the name of the users looks a little bit suspicious. And I'm saying that as a Debian developer. Uh, in that case, I kept digging uh, and tried to figure out what, what are the sources. And I was able to find uh, uh, a page uh, in Debian that says uh, we, what are the checksums for all of the of the containers, and that was a way for me to verify that whatever I downloaded was an official image. But I'm not sure everyone that uses containers uh, would go to check the the supply chain for containers would try to do the research on all of them and verify the, the checksums. And of course, it's uh, th there's a difficulty in doing it for each time you uh, want to use a, a container. And of course, supply chains might be much longer than the, the three examples uh, on this supply chain I showed you. <clears throat> so, you might feel safe in this case because we were able to, to trace the, the steps uh, from WordPress to PHP to Debian, uh, check the, 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 the Docker files, sorry, check the sources. And it's looked reasonable. We were able to, to check, to make, to verify the checksum for the base image. Um, everything else was targeted uh, from official sources. So it looks safe. So my question to you at this point, do you feel safe? 
And if you say you do, then I have a follow-up question. Who said that the Docker files I showed you are the ones actually used to create the containers? And if you, even if you had the files, how would you know uh, that these are the files that uh, actually been used to create the containers? Or how would you verify that uh, the, the, they weren't the one being used? And in this case, remember that whenever you uh, uh, download the container, you just download the artifact, you don't get the sources and that's a major problem. So if your answer is that you're safe, you can just scan the container, you write it to a certain degree. But in this case, I'll quote uh, a blog post by Dan Lornack, which is also a keynote for this conference. And he, he checked and he actually claims you're wrong because whatever your scanner, your container scanners, doesn't know can hurt you and result might vary between container sorry between container scanners but the the most important thing from his blog his blog post is that scanners check uh for very specific things inside the container and most of them they depend on uh, metadata available in the container in mechanism available uh, as part of the container or the operating system in them. For example, uh, the scanners might query the package software uh, management uh, from the operating system. It might query uh, NPM, PyPy, or, or PIP, sorry, uh, or other installers available as part of the containers. And that makes uh, metadata quite important because if container scanners mostly verify uh, uh, the package they can see, we should treat the information or metadata as important. Otherwise we see nothing. Um, and we might want to invest in those custom scans rules uh, for popular or special edge cases, for example, uh, uh, node. Uh, in cases we just get the binary and not install it from the operating system. Uh, but that's an endless game of cat and mouse. Uh, we create a custom rule, then we find out there's a package that wasn't scanned. And that's a, that's a problem. Um, the other thing is we, we want to reuse existing artifacts instead of rebuilding them. Uh, in the example you, you saw with WordPress and PHP, uh, WordPress used the official PHP uh, containers and they're being built from source. It means they don't come from the Debian distribution, although Debian has its own PHP packages. They're being maintained. There's a security team for Debian, which maintains uh, the packages on top of whatever the, the PHP maintainers do. Uh, and I know that from the past, from first hand, because I also help in a few cases securing these packages uh, and also working with the security patches in making sure the, the PHP maintainers took them uh, or making sure the PHP security team uh, uh, put them in place. And in this case, uh, uh, some of the metadata we also have is from the distribution itself. In this case, I opened the, uh, the tarball uh, we saw a reference to earlier uh, from Debian and um, each package has uh, both the, the, the files themselves. There's a list of files, but there are also the, the MD5 sums uh, of the files being supplied. And this is metadata we can verify against, making sure the, the whatever we see in the container come from a verified uh, publisher and the results is something which is official. And that's great for us and that's great news. But the problem that metadata is not always present. And the things I'm um, referring to is distroless containers. Uh, they're still based on Linux distributions, uh, uh, which might be a little bit uh, counterintuitive uh, regarding the name. But the idea with distroless containers is that being, they've been reduced to not hold the, the Linux distribution they're built, they're being built from. Um, the idea is to save size. 
Uh, there's claims that it, it saves uh, attack vectors or attack surfaces, uh, which is true because if you have less files in your containers, there might be less uh, software in it and then uh, less security vulnerabilities. So we try to eliminate all of them. But the, the problem without the metadata of visibility is limited. We have no idea which version of the packages are being installed, uh, what's their MD5 sums, and uh, a way to verify the origins of these binaries. Uh, and don't forget that the, the base image for whatever you use is like giving someone root access on your machine. Uh, for example, if someone brings you uh, uh, a, a malicious uh, whatever binary executable to your build system, he might inject a lot of stuff into your software which you build in that container. So one of the solutions we have in this case is reproducible builds. Uh, and from my perspective, this is the only way to, to be safe um, is to have the ability to retrace the actions and verify the binary results. If I can do the same process as you, get the exact same results, I know your system isn't compromised. And then in that, um, for the long run, whatever you, you said or claim you do, you actually do because I can trace that. Um, and that's the real way of fully leveraging the transparency of open source. And that's a big advantage because with open source, we already have the sources. We can rebuild it. We have the, we can get the instructions. Uh, and that's something we can do with cloud software. And, uh, there's a big benefit. Um, I want to use the, the, uh, this presentation. Uh, to commendate uh, a Debian uh, work on reproducible building, and it's done that for, for years. Um, and that makes Debian a much safer distribution because we can verify everything. And that's work being uh, done by uh, the core team of uh, reproducible builds, now much bigger than only Debian, but it started with Debian. Uh, but if you think about it, it's similar to the same service CentOS brings to uh, Reddit because it takes their binaries, it, sorry, it takes their sources, creates the binaries again, and verify that everything is uh, similar and compatible. And uh, there's a big advantage for having more and more projects, checking everything that the, the um, recipes are being used and the results are exactly the same as we expected. And uh, we have the same effect with uh, Ubuntu and others do, do it for Debian. Uh, we said uh, about uh, CentOS and others for, for Reddit. And who does that for containers? We have it for Linux distributions, but there's nothing that rechecks uh, containers, says, okay, give me your sources, give me your Docker files, I recreate it, verify that it has the exact same results. Um, in a lot of cases, uh, are we sure we have all, all the sources available? In a lot of cases, we don't. And there is no way to get identical containers. We can create it again, but we have no way to, to guarantee it's the exact same thing. Um, because in a lot of cases, there is we don't have all the ingredients, either, even if we have some of them. Um, there's other, there are other solutions about signatures. Uh, uh, for example, just a second, uh, cosine. And it could really help against type squatting. It can make sure we get uh, um, the, the package from uh, an, an official source, someone that wanted to clone our software, maybe create uh, a container from our sources, uh, wouldn't they be able to sign it. But uh, uh, the problem that they can sign their container as well, and if you only check that the signature exists, then we might get uh, uh, signed uh, artifacts, containers, or whatever from malicious attackers uh, because they, they also have the ability to sign. And in this case, we need to, to, to make sure it's uh, from the right person. And that's, again, a harder case, as we saw with uh, uh, other type of squatting uh, problems. 
And again, even if you get something signed, it doesn't mean it's safe. And that's another problem uh, regarding containers, especially containers, but it's also true for other artifacts. Um, for example, um, these would also be signed. And uh, recently we had a case where hackers injected uh, a malware into multiple, multiple extensions from FigFish. Uh, it's a vendor of Magento WordPress integrations. Um, and of course they have a, a lot of uh, uh, downloads because they're quite popular. Uh, and the intruders took control of uh, fig, uh, FishPig's uh, server infrastructure and added the malicious code to the vendor's uh, proprietary software, not to the open source. First, because it has fewer um, uh, transparency, but also because the, their build system and distribution system automatically signed the, the, the software and distributed it to a lot of people. <coughs> And, and that made everything uh, uh, being distributed in high numbers uh, in a short time. And in this case, I think the, the transparency of open source yet again is an important way to, to protect us. Um, but we need to be able to, to check the sources and not trust anything which is signed. And this example is an example why signing is not the only solution. So if we talk about what might be a solution, um, first let's talk about uh, container creation best practices. We need to make sure we get in the code from verified sources. We should prefer uh, Git for accountability and transparency um, because we have the history. And uh, uh, for tarballs or other artifacts, we don't have any change history. So whatever we have, we prefer to have uh, uh, a way to, to make sure what was changed in the last release um, to verify that uh, things are being done as we expect. And of course, with Git, we also have uh, uh, SHA-1 to SHA-256. Uh, and then we can verify the, the, the commit to, to, the, uh, to the artifacts. Of course, we want software reproducibility. Uh, we want the same for containers and we want access to Docker files, which is not always available, as I mentioned. And even if it is available, we don't always know it's the same uh, file being used to create a container. Whenever you upload the containers to a registry, you don't have to upload the Docker file. And I think trying to tie these together would be a major step forward with uh, both cloud native environments and both with infrastructure as code security. Um, so if we want to secure container creation, uh, my recommendation would be to start with uh, KICS, as mentioned uh, in the beginning, it stands for keep infrastructure as code secure. It's a OPA uh, based rules uh, to secure your Docker files, hand charts, and uh, other uh, infrastructure code formats, including whatever the, the cloud vendors create specifically. Um, we want to, to, if we're talking about the, the salsa diagram, we want to secure it as early as possible, but also go over the, the supply chain and make sure that whatever we use is secured as well. Um, if we're going to go into a little bit more detail about securing container creations, uh, one of the examples could be, is downloading a tarball uh, inside your container a bad practice? Uh, you might have a rule against it, uh, and which is as actually one of the things we saw with uh, the WordPress container, which actually takes a tarball from the, the WordPress websites, deploys it as part of the container, which means it doesn't have a way to verify the, the details of, of the tarball, the signature and so on, because it also downloads the signature from the same case. If, I'm, if I were able to change something uh, on, the, on the WordPress website, I, I have an easier way to influence the container, although I might not have access to the Git. In this case, I would prefer to see uh, a Git repository being cloned into the container environment uh, and then 
having uh, the checksum being published as part of that container. Um, same case with uh, uh, base images. Uh, we want to make sure we, we have rules that will help us make sure they're uh, verified and hopefully make sure they're reproducible. In this case, uh, uh, we want to make sure a, a specific container version or, or checksum is reproducible. And then we say, okay, this is secure. I know I verified the sources. I might use it again. Uh, either we do the, the, the check or someone we trust does the check. Um, going on uh, uh, shortly with Kix, uh, it has a lot of supported platforms. It's already been uh, adapted by GitLab uh, as the infrastructure as code, and I recommend you to adopt it as well. If we talk about uh, key takeaways, uh, containers and infrastructure as code are called infra, but they're still software-based. Uh, as any software, they have the same problems, uh, including security. Uh, the biggest challenge for us uh, is uh, software supply chain and its security implications. And we should verify everything we can in the software supply chain because we don't take code from strangers. Uh, just to give you a short example about type swatting, uh, all of you, uh, and especially on uh, OpenSSF, uh, know about Salsa, that's a scheme or uh, a ways to, to uh, secure your artifacts. But if you go to uh, uh, salsa.dev, you might get this page, uh, which is something not related to software security. If you go to github.com slash salsa, you get this. And all of this because uh, salsa I, on, on the web page and also on, on GitHub is written without the A. Uh, and that's a short example of typo squatting and something that it's very easy to, to be uh, uh, wrong, even if you're sure uh, that you have the right address. Thank you very much, everyone.